Hello everybody! Welcome to Math 22 Motion in Space Discussion Class. Before we proceed to our examples, let's first recall the formulas that we have learned from our previous lecture. Let us suppose that the position function of an object is given by the vector valued function r of t. Then the distance traveled by the object from t equals a to t equals b is given by the arc length of the graph of our position function from a to b. The displacement, on the other hand, as it moves from t equals a to t equals b, is the vector r of b minus r of a. We also learned about the average speed on the interval t to t plus delta t, and this is the ratio s of t plus delta t minus s of t all over delta t. Meanwhile, the instantaneous speed is given by the limit as delta t goes to zero, of our average speed. And notice that this limit is precisely s prime of t or ds over dt. And ds over dt, as we have learned from previous discussion, is precisely the magnitude of r prime of t. We also have the average velocity on the, on the interval t to t plus delta t. And this is the ratio r of t plus delta t minus r of t all over delta t. On the other hand, the instantaneous velocity is the limit of our average velocity as delta t vanishes to zero. And again, this limit is just r prime of t. Finally, we have the instantaneous acceleration, and this is given by the limit of this ratio as delta t goes to zero. And this limit, again, is just v prime of t. And since we have v of t equals r prime of t, we also have a of t equals r double prime of t. We have also seen that a of t can be expressed as the sum of these two products. It's the sum of this product, the square, sorry, the second derivative of the arc length times the unit tangent vector. And this product, the product of the square of the derivative of the arc length, the curvature, and the unit normal vector. And we also write this sum as such, where a sub t of t denotes the second derivative of the arc length, and a sub n of t denotes the product of the square of the derivative of the arc length and the curvature. We have special names for a sub t of t and a sub n of t. We call a sub t of t the scalar tangential component of acceleration, and this gives the rate at which the speed is changing with respect to our parameter t. Meanwhile, a sub n of t is the scalar normal component of our acceleration, and this gives the rate at which the velocity's direction is changing with respect to t. We have also seen that a sub t of t can be, ob can be obtained using this formula. a sub t of t is just this is scalar, is the dot product of v of t and a of t all over the magnitude of v of t. And a sub n of t is this non-negative scalar, is the magnitude of the cross product of v of t and a of t all over the magnitude of v of t. We have now recalled all the formulas that we need. We may now proceed to our examples. Let's start with this one. Suppose that the path of a moving object is defined by the vector function r of t equals sine 2t, t, t negative cosine 2t. We are asked to determine the velocity, speed, and acceleration at any time t. We are also asked to find the displacement and the distance traveled by the object from the point 0, 0, negative 1 to the point 0, pi, negative 1. And finally, we are asked to find the scalar tangential and normal components of the acceleration when t is pi over 4. Let us start with letter A. We are given r of t and we want to find the velocity function. So let's just recall the relationship of v of t and r of t. We have that v of t equals r prime of t. So to obtain v of t, we just differentiate r of t, and since r of t is a vector-valued function, we differentiate component-wise. So the first component of our velocity function is the derivative of sine 2t, and that is given by 2 cosine 2t. The second 
uh, component on the other hand of v of t is the derivative of t which is 1 and the third component of v of t is the derivative of negative cosine 2t which is 2 sine 2t and this is our velocity function. Next, let's get the speed and recall that the speed is just the magnitude of our velocity function and to get the magnitude of a vector valid function we just get the square root of the sum of the squares of the components so we have the square root of 2 cosine 2t squared plus 1 squared plus 2 sine 2t squared let us simplify uh, we have this we have here 4 cosine squared 2t and here 4 sine squared 2t and if we combine the two and use Pythagorean theorem we got we get 4 plus 1 so we have square root of 5 this is the speed at any time t. So we have a constant speed. Next, let's have the acceleration. Recall that the acceleration is just v prime of t. So we just re refer to our v of t and we differentiate v of t. So again, we differentiate component wise. For the first component of our acceleration function, we differentiate 2 cosine 2t and that is just negative 4 sine 2t. For the second component, we differentiate 1, we get 0. For the third component, we differentiate 2 sine 2t, we get 4 cosine 2t. And this is our acceleration function. 